Hi, my name is Martin Faruja. Many people call me the phone coach or the cold calling king. Over the next few short minutes that we're going to share here with uh, you guys and with Prosper, we're going to cover some very vital tips on how to take your business forward using what I consider to be the most valuable business tool. You can build a global empire from your armchair using a humble telephone. Thank you, Martin. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the form coach himself, Martin. Martin, how are you doing, my man? I'm fantastic, Prosper. And so good to, uh, to be here to reach out to your many, many viewers and listeners today. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, my viewers are people um, that are on a mission to build businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. But obviously, as we know, business involves the exchange of money and goods and services. That only happens when you have communicated with people. That happens when you have, um, you know, sold your value to people and they now understand you, know you, like you and trust you. And that's how they can actually do business with you. But that doesn't come easily. Um, you know, Martin, as, as you and me know, some people would rather be in the coffin than to actually give out the eulogy. So, you know, with your expertise and how you've lived your life, you have since presented to over a hundred thousand people and yep. it was either face to face or over the phone. And in some circles, you've been affectionately known as the phone coach. All right. So I really want us to, you know, open up the Pandora's box on that topic in of itself, because these days, the more you, the closer you are to video, the closer you are to the phone, the closer you are to the bank. So if you're not Absolutely. speaking your brand value, your ethos, or even selling any of your goods and services, nobody's going to hear about you. And there's no way you're going to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Martin, obviously you're the expert in this. I'm going to shut up so you can do all the talking because that's your expertise, Mr. Phone Coach. Tell us a little bit about how this all started and how you then got the nickname, The Phone Coach. Okay, so thank you, Prosper, and thank you so much for such a, a beautiful, warm introduction. And you are so right. I mean, what's interesting is that many people would rather die than do public speaking. The telephone, I find people run a very close second. If I give them the phone and say, call your best friend, organize a coffee catch up, how quick could you do it? Oh, they can do it in an instant. But when I then say, now use the phone to build your business, ring me to make an appointment, oh, all of a sudden the phone hasn't changed, but up here it's like a 20 pound weight. This all started, and I'll go way back. I've been selling since 12 years old, knocking on doors, asking people, can I wash your car for $10? Because my mum and dad said to me, if you want to make pocket money, you've got to find a way to do it. So I used to do that. Then I picked up a paper run. And what I found out, and it was through a cousin of mine, he introduced me to the owner of this news agency, and he was about to let this paper run go. And I said, well, I'll, I'll have a go at doing it. And it was up and down hills and what have you. Within three weeks, he could not work out how I'd go back with my barrow totally empty. So he, the fourth week, he actually met me halfway and he actually came with me. And he was amazed how many people would come out. Oh, hi, Martin. Have you got my magazine? Have you got this? Because over the time, I had to keep increasing papers, magazines, etc. So I guess really I then learned at a very, very young age what I call the three L's to success. The three L's to success really in anything you do in life. And that's very simple. We all have two ears and one mouth. Unfortunately, most people don't use it in that proportion. You see, you have to learn from your customer. You have to learn. And how do you learn is you listen, ask the right questions. It's in the listening and identifying. Only then, only then can you find and give them the right solution. Too often, and I'm Prosper, I'm sure you'd agree, how often you find people approach you and all they want to do really is push their solution. I don't even even uncovered your pain factor. I mean, can you imagine walking into a doctor, hasn't even asked you any questions, and he's already giving you a bunch of pills? 
It's like, well, hang on, mate, I haven't even told you what's wrong with me. So, yeah, I learned very quickly. Prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. Selling, promotion, getting yourself out there is no different. The only way you can be successful is you have to listen, learn, and the most important, love. Love your customer to bits. Love them like they're the best thing since sliced bread because guess what? They are. What's interesting is sometimes I find people will talk to their best friend better than what they do to the customer, but it's the customer that puts that money in your pocket to help you enjoy and live the lifestyle you want. Now, when it comes to being on the telephone, you need to be what we call on point. And on point means you have to have what is your objective for each and every call. Is it to make an appointment? Is it to do market research? Is it to make a sale? Or is it purely to do a follow-up? Each call, when followed with the clear objective, I can almost guarantee your results. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for the deep dive that you just went in there and, you know, the value that you um, expressed within the first, you know, segment of the episode right there we might as well just you know end it there i mean somebody can <laughs> have so many takeaways from that now martin oh, no, no. i've got some other good ones yet prosper i've got a few other little gems <laughs> absolutely let's see if we can bring them out now martin obviously uh right now you just sold to us that you are really good at what you're doing you just sold to us the fact that fear has got a whole lot more to do than you, um, you know, presenting to the person because you just sold to us the idea that, um, you know, if you're going to be ringing up somebody you're familiar with, you are, you quickly pick up the phone and you don't even think about it twice. Now, yes. why then have people made selling, you know, sound like it's such a dirty word? Oh, look, Prosper, Prosper, you, you, you've gone right to the heartstrings there. In fact, that's one of my favourite topics, that selling is not a dirty word. I don't know where this whole idea of selling has become grubby and dirty. At the end of the day, let's, let's get right down to what I call the very basics. I'm all about what I call common sense selling, and it's as simple as this. When a baby cries, a baby cries for one of three reasons. It's hungry needs a nappy change, or it wants to be cuddled and, and go to sleep. That's a form of selling. What is selling all about? Selling is simply a transfer of ideas to then assist you in making a decision. As we grow up, what's interesting is we take away, I guess, that innocence. You know, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I've got a gorgeous little girl, six years old. She does not understand the word no. She's a tough negotiator, I tell you, and she is amazing the way she does it. And what's interesting, but as adults, we all of a sudden take, I guess, what I call the fear of rejection. We take it very personal. Oh, they said no to me. Why? Yeah, and we get so caught up in the mindset of trying to identify when the reality is, I won't say no to you personally. I mean, this is what's great about doing it all over the phone. They don't even know you. The best thing about being on the phone is you can be the best actor. And that's really what it comes down to, having a good script, being the best actor, and most importantly, and people, people, please, you are meant to have fun in business. I don't know where people stopped that they can't have fun. You are allowed to have fun. You can be professional and have fun. It's proven. The research is in. People buy off people they like. People buy off people they can relate to. People buy off people they can have a bit of fun with. Let's get back to having a bit of fun. Absolutely. Because when you're selling something, whatever it is that you're selling, it's designed to assist the next person. So I don't think you as part of the audience, you are selfish enough not to give off what it is that would save somebody's life um, their happiness or their business if what you're selling is genuinely um, you know targeted to the right audience that has the right kind of pain right there so yes. in, in, in some of the work that you're doing obviously you've got to sell to an audience that's willing and able to purchase from you that makes the whole process really really seamless 
Um, what, what is it that you maybe teach people with regards to prospecting and lead generation? Okay. It's probably more about the importance of the words you use and the phraseology that you use. And there's probably three that really, really make, I guess, the hairs on, on, on my neck stand up. When I hear someone ring up and say, I was just wondering if I could have some of your time. Well, what do you mean you're wondering? What, what are you, Alice in Wonderland? You know, you've got to be firm in your approach. You've got to have that assertiveness. Now, do not confuse assertiveness with aggressiveness. There is a big, big difference. Assertive, assertiveness is simply that you are very confident and you're very passionate in what you're there to provide to the person. But obviously, <clears throat> I mean, as I said before, that cannot come across clearly without first building that rapport. And how you build that rapport is very simple. So, hi, this is Martin from Eagle Coaching. Now, just there alone, this is Martin. Research has shown that after a person's name, you have a heightened awareness of anywhere from 15 to 25 seconds. So after the name, you then put what we call an impact statement or the, the, the reason why you're making that call, whether it be you, you want to save the money on their mortgage, have they you know, recently had a review on the current interest rates, um, are they looking to grow their business by way of leads, referrals? So you want that, what we call that opening probing statement or question after the name. Very similar when you answer the phone. It's great when I hear people go, oh, hi, thank you for calling Prosper Speaking. Well, I hope you know that you're speaking. Now, a lot of it is psychology. You want to finish with your name. So it's very simple. Thank you for calling Eagle Coaching. This is Martin. This is, it's a power statement. It shows who you know, who you are, where you're from. You're very, very confident. Your name is not speaking. Unless I haven't come across anyone yet in my 30 plus years. Unless you have Prosper. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. I mean, we do have funny names, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hope that that's making a lot of sense to people out there. That a lot of it really comes down to the words we use, the inflection, the tonality. Yeah. Tonality, very important. Absolutely, because you did mention that even your own daughter um, is an excellent hostage negotiator. Are they <laughs> feeding you well there, um, you know, <laughs> Martin? So, you know, the, 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 whatever we're doing in life, we have to be communicating with yet another person and mm. selling them on an idea. So. If you are not doing it well, then obviously, can you imagine how many other things you're missing out on um, in your life? Now, let's go back to business. If people are not extending their um, you know, services, their products to people either via the phone or reaching out to them in person, um, you know, what, is, there, is there another, is it, is it possible that they can actually be missing out on building um, an empire using their phone or you know whatever device they can use to communicate with other people absolutely prosper let, let me ask you this question have has an email ever convinced you or would a person picking up the phone hearing that voice which would have more effect for you to say you know what yeah i'd like to investigate further or let's Let's get together and, and let's see where this can work. Great, <clears throat> great question. Because with me, I only check my emails twice a day. So in go. the morning and in the evening. And if it's not too urgent, uh, you know, it's put a, a away. And before yeah. you know it, it's, it's already forgotten. So an email is not as instant as somebody saying, hey, Prosper, listen, we've got this. Can I hear your opinion on that? You know what I mean? And depending yeah. on their confidence, like you mentioned earlier on, they get further than me trying to type in whatever it is in, a, in, in an email, which I think is wasting my time instead of somebody just picking up a, a phone and yeah, communicating that with me. Absolutely. Yep. And also what you find too is that I know myself, there's been times when I'm typing an email and then it's like, you know what? This email is still not going to get across my message because when all of a sudden you put the voice behind it, you're speaking to the person and you're getting that instant feedback. I mean, and so I put it this way. 
we have a lot of great entertainers, bands, singers, and what have you. Now, why do they still go out there and perform live when these days we live in a digital world? Because they love, they love getting that feedback from the crowd. It's no different to myself. Why do I still love speaking live in front of people? Because I'm an interactive speaker. I'm an interactive coach. I love getting people involved. I'm happy to take questions. And I'm big enough to say, if I don't know something, I don't know. And what's interesting is people say, oh, but Martin, what if someone asks you a question you don't know? My response, okay, so give me a figure. How many people are in the room? Oh, let's say 50. Well, I've got a brain's trust of 50 other people to workshop with. And that's part of the key and the secret to success as well. I think too often in today's world, everyone thinks you have to know everything and be an expert on everything. No, you don't. If you're prepared to say, look, that's a great question. Let's go on a journey of discovery together. Or I actually know someone within my network that can assist you. In fact, I had it happen only today. A lady wanted to um, have a chat to a real estate person about commercial property. She said, Martin, I know you've got quite a big network. Do you know someone? Within 30, 30 seconds, I had her hooked up to a friend of mine who's a very, very good property person. So it's not about what you know. Sometimes it's about who you know. As they say, your net worth is as big as your network. Absolutely. I, li I like the last uh, statement there. But just really going back to uh, <clears throat> the entrepreneur of nowadays, um, they are afraid to pick up the phone or go on Facebook Live or on a video or on an interview like this because they suffer from a big case of imposter syndrome. Now, how do you address that, um, you know, especially for the people that you coach and the people that you help to frustrate their self success with real uh, proven, proven strategies that you have there, uh, Martin? Okay. Well, on my, um, on my great program here, Phone Skills for Success, I speak about what I call identifying how to get past that blockage in your mind. And it's a very simple technique, actually. Let's say each call is worth approximately, say, $20. So what I suggest to people is they get a $20 note and actually stick it on the phone. And then next to that, actually have a sign. Each no is worth $20. And what that does, it actually changes your mindset. Now, this is something I kicked off many, many years ago that was, it was unheard of. And I did it with a gentleman who was um, doing insurance, financial planning. I caught up with him about three months later and I'd actually noticed that on his phone, the, uh, he had a $100 note, it was a $100 note that just come out. I said, oh wow, three months ago, you only had a, a $20 note, what changed? And he said, well, man, as you can see, there's a hundred and a big plus sign because I've worked out now that each no, I think, was worth something like $155 or something to that effect. And all it came down to was a simple action, but also having something visual that every time he hung up the phone and started to get down on himself on the person saying no, he just looked at that and gone, oh no, actually, cha-ching, I just made X amount of dollars. And through a few very simple techniques, we took him from where he was averaging about a one in 20 to a one in five. So every five calls, he got a qualified appointment. Myself personally, when I've um, been doing the lead generation for insurance, and this was pure cold calling, not warm, pure cold, I'd usually run at a one in two, one in three. And that's purely not, not to boast, so I'm very proud of those results, but purely to show that it's all about the understanding of why. Why do you do anything? So it all starts with why. Great little video to watch by a great gentleman called Simon Sinek. I suggest you watch it. And he talks about the importance of why. And that's the same. When you use a telephone for business, just think to yourself, wow, how much time am I actually saving running around? I mean, too often we get caught up. Oh, let's catch up for a meeting. Let's have a coffee, this and that. When the reality is, how much of that could you have actually done on the phone? So then when you actually go for that appointment, you're actually sitting down to do business together. You've, you've already covered off all the preliminaries over the telephone. See, the telephone can be your best time management tool and it is sitting there waiting to be what I call your best personal cash machine when utilized correctly.
Absolutely. All right. I was just really hoping that by the time you finish speaking, some money would start oozing out of my <laughs> phone here, but it doesn't really sure work. Will. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Martin, obviously, let's say you go past the first call and you've been maybe told to ring back another time and, um, you know, maybe that was just a, an inconvenient time for your, um, you know, your recipient of the message that you wanted to convey. How important really is um, follow-up calls? Because I think a lot of businesses and a lot of people really have heavier feet on the follow-up calls than they do on the initial calls. So what's your experience on your take on that? Okay, Prosper. Prosper, you've really, really honed in there. One of the things I, I cover off in my program is that's the holy grail. The secret to success is actually in the follow-up. And the secret to success is doing the follow-up when you said you will do it. So if you say to the person, look, I've got my diary open, would you prefer I ring you back 10 o'clock tomorrow? And the person actually says, yes, please do me a favour. Make the call at the 10 o'clock the next morning. Nothing, nothing worse than if I'm sitting there waiting for your call, then you don't do it. And then you might ring me an hour later. Well, guess what? You've just lost your opportunity because two things. Number one, it shows, well, really, you weren't really interested. Number two, it also shows, well, if you're not that serious about your business to make that follow-up call when we had arranged it already, okay, it's like today. We made a commitment to each other that we would be on this um, this video. Right. Now, imagine if I hadn't shown up. You would sit there thinking, well, geez, Martin, I've given you a great opportunity, a, a great worldwide audience to connect to. Why didn't you? So I think more than in anything, I, I guess I'm a big one on manners. Manners and courtesy, you know, growing up, it was all jumped into us. Thank you. Please use a person's name correctly. Guess what, people? It's not rocket science. That's still very effective even in today's 21st century. Right. Absolutely. Well, in this, uh, you know, edge of us taking a selfie and speaking to the phone and stuff like that, have we actually, you've mentioned manners and, and I'm brought up in an African society where yep. you really address somebody by their name, Mr. Martin yep. or Martin as per se, or you create rapport with somebody, you know, before you dive into whatever it is that you, um, you know, going to be asking them or talking to them about. I think we already did that um, and you could see is how important really is etiquette and manners, um, you know, for today in order for you to actually get past maybe the gatekeeper and second, um, you know, reaching the, 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 you know, decision maker, the one that you're actually going to be speaking to. Okay. You just mentioned the word that really, I really hone in on that's gatekeeper. You may remember at the beginning, I said I could almost guarantee a person's results by their mindset. What was interesting is over the years, people would say, Martin, how is it you can get past the receptionist, the secretary, personal assistant, and eventually have them eating out of your hand? It's very simple. You've got to remember, that person probably knows more about the business, what's going on, than chances the owner of the business. And guess what? Sometimes it's the actual owner of the business that does answer the phone, but may not tell you straight away. <clears throat> Treat everybody with the respect that you expect to be treated with. So, person answers the phone. I always say, have a notepad next to you. Write down their name. So then, oh look Jane, thank you so much. The person who would look after the booking of speakers and coaches to come and train your staff. Now you sound like you're, you're the person that probably look after that, because I love the way you greeted me on the phone. Imagine the results you're going to get as opposed to, oh, hi, can you please put me through to the person who books speakers and coaches? Which yeah. one generate a better result? Absolutely. Now, on, now, on top of that, once I've got Joan and she's given me the information, I then thank her. The person I need to speak to, would they be available now, please? Yes, they would. Joan, just before you put me through, I would like to actually ask, is it okay with you if I mention to Michael about how great you've looked after me, please? <clears throat> What's that just done? Firstly, 
it's probably sits you right apart from the 20 or 30 other calls that drones are going to get. Secondly, when you make that, and I've proved this time and time again, when you make that follow-up call, it's amazing how that person just recognises your voice straight away. Oh, hi, Martin, great to hear from you. Look, Michael's waiting for your call. Let me put you through. Thirdly, when you go through to Michael, be a man or woman of your commitment and keep that commitment and actually say, Hi, Michael, look, my name is Martin. Firstly, before we start, I just have to commend Joan on the job that she does. She is phenomenal. She probably deserves a pay rise. That does two things. Number one, it shows, firstly, your respect for that person. Number two, it's a quick bit of an icebreaker as well. Wow, because if you lead with gratitude and value, you're obviously showing the other person how much of a good person you are. So automatically takes their guard down and Mm -hmm. um, to the person that would have picked up, um, you know, your phone, there's nothing. I think it was Dale Carnegie in um, how to win friends and influence people Mm -hmm. mentioned something like the, the person's name or their voice. I mean, the person's name is like music uh, to their ears. So we keep repeating their name, you know, and calling them by their first name every second uh, sentence, then obviously you would have won them to your side. Well, mm. now Martin, I can't thank you or pay you enough for the value that you've dropped, um, you know, on this show today. Now, obviously there's people that are in the um, audience that are really watching this show and enjoying it as, as we're going along or commenting and asking you questions already. Is there yet another way that people can get a hold of you um, or should they just ring you and they can just hear your magnificent voice? <laughs> <laughs> Look, firstly, by all means, go to my website. That's www.eaglecoaching.com.au. And the reason why I named the business Eagle Coaching is so I can help you soar with your results. Um, another way, please feel free to drop me a line. I'd love to hear your feedback even on, on this, um, this interview. I'd love to get your feedback on any questions. Drop that to inquiries, E-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S, at eaglecoaching.com.au. And uh, for those of you that jump onto my website, just um, put, your, put your name and email, and you'll get my complimentary copy of Top 10 Phone Skills Tips. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that value um, that you're going to be putting in there. And uh, viewers, I will be putting all those links right at the bottom so you can actually, um, you know, get, um, you know, a hold of uh, Martin so he can show you how, um, you know, you can fast track your sales success, especially using the phone and communicating with people directly. Now, Martin, you mentioned something that caught my attention a little bit earlier on before we close off. Um, and that was the three L's, um, yes. which encompass listening, uh, learning, and loving the person that you're going to be talking to. Well, I yes. did a lot of listening and I have learned quite a lot. And I think the audience have, um, you know, um, they have, you know, learned quite a great deal uh, from us. Now, I would love that you leave us with some sort of parting words or some sort of advice for us to get into the new year strong, better, and, um, you know, bolder so that we can take on our customers, our suppliers, or whoever we need to communicate with uh, on the phone or in person without the fear or the blockages that we might encounter that would, um, you know, stop us dead in our tracks. Okay. This little device, okay, it's called a smartphone, but it's only as smart as what we use it. Think of it as a gold mine. How many contacts, how many businesses, how many entrepreneurs do you have in that little device that could be literally just waiting for you to give them a call? You see, I believe inherently we do like to help and assist each other. So reach out, give someone a call. I challenge you, give someone a call right now. Say, hi, just catching up. I haven't spoken to you for a while. What what are you up to? How can we maybe help each other develop our businesses? Is there something that I can do for you? Is there something you can do for me? And I'll tell you now, you could actually be surprised at just how quick your business 
could go from here to soaring up there with the Eagles because it all starts with hello. It's as simple as that. It starts with picking up the phone, taking a simple action, consistently done, will compound over time. So a simple action. Simple action of maybe saying, okay, I'm going to make 10 phone calls a day. 10 phone calls a day. That's 50 a week. Stretch that out over 40 weeks. Imagine for a moment what the difference to your bottom line would be just doing that simple action. And hey, if it means all of a sudden you've got to employ a couple of extra people, well, hey, your business is going through the roof and soaring up there with the eagles. Absolutely. Well, Martin, I can't thank you enough for all of that value, your time and your expertise on the show today, um, especially with you know all the lessons that you brought out because it's just fear at the end of the day because you did stress out right at the beginning of the call that if you were to pick up the call, uh, the phone to talk to your mother or your father or your sister, or your brother or your son or your daughter, you'd make it a whole lot an easier experience than you would be picking up to somebody who's actually going to pay you money so that you can leave the lifestyle that you are seeking. So Martin, thank you so much for that. And um, I'm hoping the audience would have a lot of questions for you. Um, so I will put all your details at the bottom there so that they can be in touch with you directly. And, um, you know, you can help them to fast track their success, um, you know, with real and proven strategies that you have. Thank you so much, Martin. And just, just very quickly, yes. for those of you that really want to excel, I do have a program available. Right. It's uh, my 30 years sort of really condensed into a 30 minute CD and a workbook. And the workbook even has to really help you get started. And I've had a lot of people comment on this, that it goes through things like your phone language, your mindset, your goal setting, even things like what we call moving ahead, your attitude. And probably the biggest thing that really excited me putting it together is actually a generic, what we call a generic multi-script. So it literally takes you, whether you want to do a market research, make an appointment, selling a product, there's a script there to help you. And then I can also do a script analysis for you to help you make sure that you're hitting the mark. It's very, very easy, people. It's very easy. Let me ask you this. Let me leave you with this. You're driving down the road at 3 o'clock in the morning and you see out of the corner of your eye a glint. As you get closer, the glint gets higher and higher. Then all of a sudden, you see a little sign that says, please feel free to take as much as you want, but you can only do it once. So you pull over, you hop out of the car, and it's an acre of diamonds. Now, you decide, okay, I'm going to ring my best friend Prosper. Now, would you ring Prosper at 3 o'clock in the morning and go, oh, hi, 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 Prosper. Look, mate, so, sorry to wake you up, but um, I've got a small, small favour to ask. Or would you be like, hey, Prosper, it's Martin. Mate, get your backside out of bed. I need you to hop in, the, hop in the car, get a truck, get something as big as you can, bring a couple of shovels because, mate, remember I told you we're going to get rich? I found it. Get down to this address. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Bye. Bang. Using that excitement, that passion, that assertiveness, I guarantee you will get results. Let's see you soar to the top. Thank you, Prosper. Thank you, everybody. Absolutely. I really liked that story. And Martin, if I call you at three o'clock, you better know something is up, all right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much there, Martin. Thank you.